Lewis Hamilton has been given special permission to run the number one on the nose of his car at this year's season finale. He's still officially entered under the number 44, but this got me thinking about the way car numbers have been doled out over the years. Drivers in Formula 1 have always had an identifying number slapped onto the side of their car. Only in the last five years have these numbers been directly associated with the drivers themselves. In the previous 64 years, the number was connected to the car, and the systems used to assign these numbers has varied wildly. For the first 24 years, from 1950 to 1974, there was absolutely no consistency in numbering the entries. And I mean that. The numbers literally changed from race to race as they were assigned by the race organisers, who didn't have a consistent system between them. I guess it's kind of like when you and your friends go on a one-off cart meeting and just get handed a number when you turn up. Or if you run a marathon and you just get given whatever number they hand you to pin onto your vest when you sign in. There wasn't even a consistent range of numbers as very occasionally some drivers would be handed three-digit numbers. I know, right? One of the unspoken rules seemed to be to avoid the number 13 as it's considered an unlucky number in Western culture, as I'm sure you're all aware. What is interesting though is that Despite Formula 1 being a global sport, there seemed to be no attention to numbers deemed unlucky in other cultures. For example, 4 and 7 are unlucky in China, 4 and 8 in Japan. The number 17 is unlucky in Italy, and 39 does not go down well in Afghanistan. So beware Baku, whoever chooses that number. I'm not complaining about this, it's just a point of interest. Now while this system functioned perfectly fine in its own way, every driver got a number after all, it was all in all viewed as a little bit messy. So in 1973, as the sport was starting to take itself more seriously as a global venture with a proper, centralised, coherent organisation, they started trialling a system that would become standard from 1974 onwards. And that's permanent race numbers. The new system for assigning numbers ends up sounding a little bit more complicated than it actually is, and at first glance seems a bit ludicrous. But here goes. So the idea was, every team would get dished out a set of numbers that would be theirs to keep, and these numbers would be based on the results of the 1973 Constructors' Championship positions. So, in 1973, Lotus came first, so they got numbers 1 and 2 for 1974. Tyrrell came second, and they got 3 and 4, and so on and so forth in this fashion right down the table. Note that we still skip number 13 because it's a spooky scary number that nobody wants. Now, in theory, each team would hold on to their numbers permanently, year on year, until the end of time. So we'd start to think of 11 and 12 as Ferrari numbers, 5 and 6 would be McLaren numbers, you know, easy to remember, simple. Now there were also extra numbers handed out for one-off occasions, like when non-works entries didn't enter every race, or when teams ran third cars occasionally, or you know, whatever, and they'd just be given the next numbers on the list. So that all seems pretty easy, right? Everyone gets those numbers forever and we never have to think about it again. Job done. Except, each year the numbers 1 and 2 would go to the team running the Drivers' Champion of the previous year. The only exception being if the reigning champion retired, in which case the team would run 0 and 2. So if we go forward a year, Emerson Fittipaldi won the title in 74. So in 1975, he and his team McLaren got the numbers 1 and 2. That means Lotus surrendered their 1 and 2 and took the 5 and 6 given up by McLaren. So the old champions just swapped numbers with the new champions. Also in 1975, BRM chose to just run a single car instead of two. So their old number 15 became vacant and was used by both Lotus and Tyrrell as and when they chose to run a third car in certain events. In 1975, Ferrari won. So then in 1976, McLaren got their old numbers, 11 and 12, and already you can see how permanent number concept is falling apart as McLaren have already had three different number pairs in their first three years in the system, and the number 15 has been used by multiple teams in the same year. Just to confuse it more, if a team leaves the championship for whatever reason, their numbers can become vacant and unused, or a new team, or an existing team with lower set of numbers, can choose to take those numbers for themselves. And this shuffling about and filling in of vacant numbers meant that Ferrari, after holding the champions 1 and 2 in 1980, dropped right down to number 27 and 28 the following year. These numbers they'd hold on to for almost every one of the years that the system persisted. As such, these numbers became synonymous with Ferrari, particularly the 27 that Gilles Villeneuve held on to during his most dramatic years at the team. Tyrrell would hold on to 3 and 4 for the entire 21 years of this number system, as they never missed a season, never won the driver's title, and never hired a reigning champion in that time. Mansell's famous Red 5 insignia came from his time at Williams, who held the 5 and 6 from 1984 through to his title win in 92. Ultimately though, despite some iconic numbers bubbling through, this system was also a bit of a mess, with no actual permanency to the numbers and weird gaps appearing in the list. Changes were brought in again to tidy everything up. 1996 brought in something much simpler 
but a little less permanent. The new system expanded on the idea of the driver's champion getting the number one. This time the champion got their number one and their teammate the number two, which so far so similar. But then after that, every other team was assigned numbers based on their position in the previous year's championship. So in 1996, when Ferrari got the one and the two, as they'd signed Schumacher who'd won the championship in 95, and everyone else got their numbers based on their positions the previous year, with the previous constructors champions, Benetton, having to take the three and the four, and the number 13 being skipped as usual. This was a very easy to follow system that also gave the numbers a kind of value. The lower the numbers on your team's cars, the better it reflected on the team. Again, if the driver's champion retired immediately after their success, their team would run a zero instead of the elusive one. Mercedes would have had to run this number in 2017 had the system still been in place after Nico jumped ship, trophy in hand. A notable quirk that came out of this system is that the car number 22 won the driver's title two years in a row. Now you'd think this would be extremely unlikely as the number 22 is given to a car in very low ranking team. However, circumstances conspired to give this number a little luck. In 2007, McLaren was stripped of all their points following a spying scandal, leaving them dead last in the constructors table. So, lucky them, they got given the numbers 22 and 23, despite being a title contending team. And Lewis Hamilton duly went on and won the title in the car number 22. The next year, Jensen Button won the title for Braun GP that also ran the numbers 22 and 23 due to a weird quirk of fate. In fact, Super Aguri had dropped out the previous year, so the numbers 22 and 23 shouldn't even have been available. But Jensen's Honda team made the surprise move of dropping out of F1. The team was then purchased and brought back to life as Braun GP, meaning that as a new entry they had to take the last numbers available. Now as Honda disappeared, technically Force India should have shuffled up to the 18 and 19 slots, giving Braun 20 and 21. But Force India had already printed out their marketing material with the 20 and 21 numbers on, so Braun got 22 and 23, and no one got 18 and 19. Good pub quiz question that, when was the last F1 season without a number 18 or 19 in it? And that's 2009. Though 18 and 19 have only been present once in the last five years. More fun trivia. I hope you're writing this down. So there was nothing particularly wrong with this method of doling out numbers, but in 2014 it was decided to assign entry numbers to the drivers instead of the cars. And this has worked out very well in other motorsports as well as sports without motors in it as it becomes part of an athlete's brand, their identity within the sport. Once picked, this number is permanently assigned to that driver, unless they absent themselves from F1 for two full consecutive seasons. So Jensen Button's two little ducks won't be up for grabs until 2020, as he made a brief cameo in Monaco 2017. The way the numbers were originally assigned in 2014 was this. Each driver listed their three preferred numbers in order of preference, and then the FIA sat down and worked Pretty hard to make sure everyone got given a number that was as high up their list as possible. Bizarrely, Pastor Maldonado actually chose the number 13, famously unavailable for almost every single race previously. Going forward, as drivers enter the sport, they can choose from any of the available numbers left. They can't pick numbers already taken or numbers that have been used in the last two seasons. Here's your first interesting fact then. Despite the system only being in place for five years, we've already had a repeated number use, with Brendan Hartley taking Will Stevens' old 28, and Pierre Gasly taking Kamui Kobayashi's old number 10. That means the current Toro Rosso squad is running completely secondhand numbers. The number 17 has of course been permanently retired, out of respect for Jules Bianchi who wore the number until his death following an accident in Japan. As usual, the number 1 is reserved for champions, but as unusual, the champion doesn't have to take it. As such, Sebastian Vettel is the only champion to choose to bear the number 1, with Hamilton sticking with 44 and Rosberg legging it before he had to make that choice. What's interesting to me is that despite drivers being able to choose from any number between 2 and 99, almost all of the chosen numbers fall in the top 30, with 15 the only unused number in the top 20. What's wrong with 15? I'll leave you to guess that. Multiples of 11 are extremely popular though, with 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 77, 88 and 99 all having been snapped up at some point. No number 66 though, probably in case the stewards think Adrian Sutil has flipped upside down. On top of the standard race numbers, teams are also given a few extra numbers that they can use for reserve drivers, test drivers and you know, the drivers they put out into free practice, that kind of thing. These are temporary numbers, so for example, Van Dorn was given the number 47 when he subbed in for Alonso in the year before he got a permanent drive, and Hartley used the number 39 through some of last year. So far no permanent driver has taken my favourite number, 38. 
Once they do though, they will receive my undying support and will naturally be able to do no wrong in my eyes. So let's all cross our fingers for someone good taking that number 38.